Okay, today we're going to talk about the Troxus Volcanus 750 watt fat tire e-bike. So this bike is marketed as an off-road, almost an electric mountain bike. Does it deliver? Yeah, it does. So let's get into it a little bit more. First up, I've got to say, with all my reviews, I did get the product for free, but I get no further compensation, so I can say exactly what I want. I have no invested interest. If you buy this bike, buy another bike. doesn't matter to me. I'm going to give you my honest opinion, and you can make up your mind on your own. Let's get started. First up, unboxing and assembly. So out of the box, it comes with the bike, charger, battery, two keys, some basic tools, an instruction manual, and that's about it. It comes packed, as you saw in the video. Mine did have slight damage on the rear fender. Now, I'll just get in the fenders out of the way here. I'm not a huge fan of these fenders on these kind of bikes. When we were out testing and riding this bike around, a screw fell off of the front fender, I was like, let's just take them off of here. You know, one of them out of the box was slightly bent off to the side. I bent it back into alignment. It wasn't a big deal, but you know, they don't serve a lot of purpose. Yeah, if you're spinning tires through the mud, they keep the mud off of you, but it's just, I don't know. They all just seem so cheap. So took the front one off, the rear one's still on there. Probably take that off too. Now for assembly, it took me about 30 to 45 minutes to put it together. I did have to have some basic tools above and beyond what they shipped with the bike, and you're not going to need any tools that most people won't have in their house anyway. Allen wrenches, screwdriver, that kind of thing. So assembly is just putting on the front tire, handlebars, headlight and pedals, not that complicated. Take it out, plug in the charger. Something kind of nice on this bike is it is not a fan-cooled charger brick, so no noise from the charger while it's charging. Some things tend to have these really heavy, noisy bricks, not the Troxxas. It comes with a 48 volt, 16 amp hour lithium ion battery that is removable. The key does not do the ignition or anything, but the key is required to take the battery off of the bike. That way people can't steal the battery off your bike. The removable battery is really nice in some environments like Arizona. You're gonna put the bike out in the garage. It's super hot. That's very bad on batteries. The batteries are not cheap for these kind of e-bikes, so help with the longevity of the battery if you take it out, store it in your house. Now I will say I did have a little bit of a problem here. I already talked about the fender screw coming loose. Well, the screw holding on part of the battery assembly where it attaches to the body of the bike also came off while we were out riding and made it really difficult to try and yank that out. The screw stayed in there. All I needed was a screwdriver, but it, you might want to check just for everything for tightness after shipping. Obviously a couple of things kind of shook loose on this bike. Haven't had any problems since. I went over it and made sure that everything was tight, but keep that in mind. I didn't have any major problems with what I lost, but you could be out riding somewhere and if you lose the right piece, it's gonna be an issue. In all fairness, that probably goes for most e-bikes that are shipped. When they get out, you should check the thing over just to make sure everything's nice and right and tight. So the weight of the bike is around 71, 72 pounds, fairly standard, maybe even a little bit light for a bike this large with these 26 inch tires. And, you know, speaking of the tires, that's why I really wanted it. Because if you're going out on rugged roads and rugged terrain, like I want this bike for, the bigger the tire, the better it handles rocks and ruts and branches and stuff like that. And that was certainly the case with this bike. You definitely feel the difference with those big tires. They are puncture resistant, Kenda lined, 26 inch by four inch wide tires, and just built to handle that kind of rugged terrain. Those tires combined with that 750 watt motor, along with some decent shocks up on the front fork, made for a great ride for this rugged kind of stuff. I'd seen enough of these reviews, it's not like I have a whole garage full of e-bikes to compare it with, 
But if you watch other reviews where they are comparing it with other 750 watt motor e-bikes, it's a true 750 watt motor. Lots of power, you can feel it, and it really makes all the difference. That, that's kind of where this bike shines. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of the specs. There are a ton of specs. You can go to the website, check those out, compare those and what is important to you specifically and compare that with other e-bikes. But I'll go through some of the basics. One thing that's pretty important is the range. The range is given at 50 miles on the website, but then it also says 49 to 62. So, you know, the range, it's kind of iffy on these things because if you're 110 pounds and you're riding it on a flat surface, you're going to go further than somebody who's 275 pounds that's trying to take it out on the trails and go up and down a bunch of hills. But 50-ish miles, took it out, rode it around quite a bit, never ran out of charge on it, so it's got decent range to it. Now, this is an e-bike with a throttle. It goes 20 miles an hour on the throttle, up to 28 miles an hour on pedal assist with five different levels of pedal assist. So that puts it in class three category. I'm not gonna go through all of the classes of e-bikes, but class three is the highest category. It has the most restrictions on where you can take it. It's treated more like a dirt bike than it is a regular mountain bike that is pedal only. So keep that in mind as well, but again, that extra power is what really makes it fun and effective and just a blast to ride around on. The Volcanus has front and rear disc brakes. It's all cable assembly. The, the wiring, the cabling is all kind of tied up, cinched up nice and neat next to the body. The brakes work great. No binding, no squealing, no noise. You want it to stop, you pull the brakes, you stop. Revisiting the shocks only has front shocks. They can be adjusted on how stiff they are or even locked out completely. I like to ride it with the lowest level, so the most cushioning you had. They work great in combination with the larger 26 inch tires. And I never adjusted the air in the tires and let them let some pressure out to make it an even smoother ride. But that's obviously an option, something you should do if you go out in the rugged terrain. But overall, it, it just handled itself really nice. It wasn't one of those super rigid, rough rides where after five minutes, you're just shaking the teeth out of your head and just feeling it straight through your body. Uh, it was, for me, perfect amount of cushion and shock absorption. Also it comes with an electronic headlight as well as an electronic brake light. So that's nice if you're gonna be riding, especially in town stuff coming up behind you. They can see your brake light, it's not just a reflector. The seat is adjustable on the stem, up and down. It's well cushioned, it's not overly cushioned, it's not under cushioned. I personally, again, I, I really enjoyed the feel of the ride on this bike all around. Seat worked great for me. The pedals, not much to say there, they're metal. They had good grip, no slippage or discomfort using those, fairly straightforward. The shifter is seven speed Shimano. And you know, the whole assembly, you can see it here, fairly standard. You wanna go through more information, check out those statistics on the website. Had no issues, no chains popping off, nothing like that. Shift gears on the fly, it was smooth and it just worked well. Now the handlebars, I felt like the grips on them were really good. Just enough cushion that it wasn't rough on the palms of your hands, but not so much that you they felt mushy, like you didn't have full control at all times. So on the right side, you have the rear brake and the shifter. So on the left side, you have the front brake, you have the bell, you have the throttle, and you have the pedal assist adjustment up and down. On the bottom of that, there is the on off button that you can hold down to turn on the display, which is in the middle of the handlebars. It gives the percent battery remaining, the miles per hour speed, the odometer, and the pedal assist level. Now, here's where I have the biggest beef with this bike. When I was out testing, every now and then when I'd turn it on, it would just flash 0% battery charge, even if it was fully charged or a good percentage charged. I would pull the battery out, replace it, turn it back on, and it would show the percent remaining. Now it just says 0% every time I turn it on. Doesn't matter if I take the battery out or not. This is new, it came up when I'm trying to finish this video review. I'm gonna try just as a regular customer to go to Troxus and say I have this problem, 
And if I can get a response from customer service and a fix or resolution of this quick enough, I'll put it at the end of the video. If I can't, I'll pin it in the comments. But you know, that's kind of a big deal. You need to know how much percent is left on the battery. It's not like I got it wet. It's not like I hit it, wrecked the bike or anything. It just stopped working on its own. That could be a deal breaker depending on how that turns out. Stay tuned to the end to see how that works. So how does it ride? City streets, no problem. It's a beast of an e-bike. Gets around, no issues whatsoever. Took it around the neighborhood. It's just, I mean, these e-bikes are so much fun. And city streets didn't even challenge this thing in the least. Took it out up into the mountains onto the forest roads and some mellower off-road type of trails. And again, it performed really well had another e-bike up there and everybody just kept kind of fighting to use the Volcanus because it's just fun. It's fun to ride and that 750 watts and it, well, I'll come back to that. I've said enough. Finally, I thought I would take it out on some more serious mountain bike trails and see how it worked. So I'm going to put a disclaimer. I'm not much of a mountain bike rider, so I wasn't really going all out. And even then, putting it on pedal assist level five, it would get me up and down the hills. I had enough control on this bike that I also had the confidence to get that momentum going, going down a hill, and then with the, even with the added weight of the bike, the extra power from that 750 watt motor combined with those large tires was enough to get me up and over the next hill and continue on. It performed really well. I mean, I think if you were good at riding a mountain bike and experienced, you would have no problem taking this out on some much more serious trails. Not a mountain bike rider, so don't go take it on the hangover trail in Sedona or something and say, this is ridiculous, it shouldn't be on a you know black diamond type of a super difficult trail. Not even sure if that's the right term for difficult trail. Anyway, it performed really well. So the cost of the bike, it is currently $13.99 on the website. Check the website, this is a discount the original price, I'm sure it goes on sale periodically, seems to be in that sweet spot of a intermediate to beginner type of an e-bike that actually is decent enough quality to be worth your time. I do have a discount code, Jerry Arizona, that will get you $150 additional off the bike. So if you act now, it's $1,399, so $1,400 minus $150, math is really hard, $1,250. Yeah, somewhere around there. Seems pretty comparative for this level of bike with a 750 watt motor, if not on the lower end of that price range for what you really get. So yeah, final thoughts. Um, the pros, that motor, that 750 watts, you can really feel it. The pedal assist, just combine that with the shocks that, you know, even though they're not really like a very well-known brand, they worked really well in conjunction with the handlebars and the cushion, the larger tires. It's just a smooth riding bike and like it's advertised for this kind of off-roading stuff, it can handle it. The cons, you know, had a couple of loose screws, a little bit of damage in shipping, the fenders are kind of flimsy, and ultimately that display glitch. Hopefully I get that figured out because like I said, that's a big deal. All in all, final impressions for you specifically, you know, this is just the review of this one bike. There are tons of other bikes out there. I have seen other videos from people that have compared it with many, many other bikes in the same type of 750 watt category. And they say that it's surprising how well it performs as far as the power and everything. So look at the specs, do your homework, compare it with other bikes, what's important to you, and make your decision from there. But all in all, Troxus Volcan is pretty solid entry. Uh, it's hard not to recommend it. It is worth considering. All right, wanted to do a quick update on the customer service. So I went on to their website and hit up the chat. And I also sent them an email saying, hey, I've got this problem with the bike. Figured a couple of days they'd get back to me. Within about 30 minutes, I got a response on the chat they asked for my address, my name, and my order number, and said, we see what your problem is. You have a battery communication error between the bike and the battery. We're gonna send you a new battery. They did ask for a photograph and some video to show what was going on. 
But that was it. I mean, it was like a 20 minute conversation and they're sending me a new battery. Very responsive customer service. I know that's an issue if it is in a local company or especially if it's an overseas company, but they were really quick. I do have to get the video out. So I will put an update down in the comments and pin it at the top of the comments saying how long it took to get the battery and if that solved my problem. So stay tuned for that. One more thing, I talk about the screws coming undone for the fenders and it suddenly remembered I put the screws in for the fenders because you have to put those on an assembly. So the loose screw thing, that was on me. That's it, we're really done now.